Hi, my name's Zach, and today I'm going to be talking to you about albuterol and why it kicks so much ass. First of all, what is albuterol? Albuterol is a drug that has been found to relieve airway inflammation, and as a result, has been widely used as a treatment for asthma. Asthma is a, condi is a chronic condition under which it makes, it makes breathing very difficult due to airway constriction. This is something like what a human airway looks like under normal, no, normal conditions. On the outside, we have a muscle cell lining, and on the inside, we have an airway cell lining. As you can see here, there's usually a very wide passage for air to pass through. But, under asthmatic conditions, there are three things that happen. First of all, the muscle cells on the outside contract. Second of all, the airway lining becomes inflamed and as, a, and as a result gets larger and on the inside the, on the inside mucus builds up and as a trio it makes the airway much much smaller and it makes it much more difficult to breathe. So how does albuterol go about fighting this issue? So albuterol is inhaled through the lungs and through this, it has the ability to come in contact with the cells lining the inside of our airways. As you can see here, there are receptors on those cells of our airways that can receive the albuterol, and that has an effect on those cells. Now, why, why does albuterol have an effect on these cells? Albuterol is very, very similar to the structure of epinephrine. Epinephrine is commonly known as adrenaline. Now, under normal conditions, epinephrine is released in the body and it allows for the relaxation of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is found surrounding uh, airways as well as blood vessels. So when they are relaxed, it allows for better airways, or for larger airways, allowing for better breathing, as well as larger blood vessels allowing for more blood to pass through. Now, in the case of albuterol, it is only absorbed in the lungs, so it, absor so it affects the cells there, allowing for the relaxation of those muscles. So, as you can see here, how you, as you can see here, the effects of albuterol on smooth muscles has a, a twofold effect. First of all, as you can see here, it binds, and as a result, two things happen. First of all, calcium is released from the cell, not allowing those cells to be reactivated to cause flexion. Second of all, the, uh, the muscle fibrils inside those cells get looped up and are allowed to relax. This is the short-term effect of albuterol on uh, airway constriction. But along with that, albuterol has a long-term effect. How, so, how does albuterol have a long-term effect on airway constriction? So, under normal conditions, the cells in our airways are very, very mobile, and they are allowed to move around to remodel to allow for better breathing. This is shown by a remodel of this house below. So, under normal conditions, it, the remodeling that occurs is in a beneficial way. But, due to the chronic nature of asthma, it the, the remodeling that occurs then is in a reverse direction and as a result is not beneficial for our abilities to breathe. What albuterol does in this case is it decreases the ability for those, mu those uh, cells to move around so they get more stuck in a, in a much better configuration so similar to those of uh, non-asthma conditions. Thus, albuterol has both a long-term and a short-term effect, making it very, very valuable for the treatment of asthma. These are the references that I used to create this video. Both of them are primary references, but if you want to look, if you want to get a better look at just the basics of how this works, Wikipedia is always a great place to start. So. Next time you see somebody that's having a very difficult time breathing and they have to use their inhaler, just remember that this stuff in there kicks ass.